back to Pia Talks. Today we are talking about The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 10, Episode 2. Hey, before we get started, if you haven't subscribed already, do it now. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content. So the show kit... The show kicks off with Dorit and PK. They were showing their new home, which is absolutely gorgeous. And they were talking about their tabloid situation that they have going on, where it looks like the tabloids are saying that they are broke, that their bank accounts are frozen, that they're having marriage problems. I mean, the tabloids is dragging them for filth right now. And it seemed like they just wanted to get out in front of it and make it you know, appear that things aren't as bad as the tabloids are making it seem. I personally don't buy all of it. Um, Dorit was, the house that they have was six point something million dollars and it's in Dorit's name. And the producer asked her why it wasn't in hers and PK's name. And she didn't really answer it. She just asked the producer was his house and him and his wife's name and the producer didn't answer. And I don't know if that's because it's not or because he didn't think it was any of her business because she's on TV and he's not. I don't know, but her and PK tried to dance around it and make it seem like everything was perfectly fine. But a lot of times in those tabloids, some of it is lies, but some of it is true. And so I think that they're down the middle, you know, somewhere lies the truth in their situation. And um, I'm leaning towards the tabloids. However, Dorit's house is gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. The kids seem happy. And PK is with her. He's not living in somebody's backyard in London in their, you know, guest house. They're together. So if they're happy, so am I. Next, the show moves to Garcelle. And she is in the process of buying a new home. Five bedrooms, five baths. Her home is not completely finished yet. She still has to lay down her floors and pick out, you know, all the other things that go in the home, countertops, you know, things like that. So it's not finished. She, it's a work in progress, but it does look like it's going to be a beautiful house when she gets finished. And she was just saying that she, you know, fresh off her divorce and everything, she just needs a change. She was telling her friend that, she thought that her and her husband, Mike, would be together forever. She just knew he was her forever husband. And she remembers the day her life blew up. Oh, I said, hey, Mike, can I use your phone? And so I look at the phone and I see a text that said, I love you. And I go, hey, what's this? And his face changed. And he said, I've been having an affair. And I said, how long? <sighs> and he said, five years. So she was quite pissed, so pissed that she wrote an email to his company and the email was spread around in the tabloids and everybody in the company, I believe, read the email. And I'm telling you, okay, I, you know, that was good. I'm sorry. I, I think that was a brilliant idea. I don't think that I would do that. I'm sure I wouldn't, but I think that that was brilliant. I mean, she didn't blow anything up. She didn't set his clothes on fire. You know what I mean? She just sent a hot email that happened to get to the tabloids. Woo. Well, anyway, she is single and ready to mingle, honey, and she is out looking for a new man that can accept her and her children because they are a package. She hangs out with Erica Jane, and Erica mentions that her husband is 80 years old, and Garcelle's like, what? She's like, 80? That's up there. And she says, you know, Erica Jane is super hot. And she said if she was into the ladies, she would definitely be all in Erica's lady pond. And... <laughs> I agree with her you know Erica is very attractive so Erica was talking about the love that she gets from Tom even though he is 33 years older than her and it brought Erica to tears and I said what 
Look at Erica crying. I mean, this Erica is way different from seasons past. This Erica is giving you raw emotion and I love it. Garcelle also let us know that her 28 year old son, Oliver, is having a baby. Well, Oliver's not having the baby. You knew that, right? Oliver's girlfriend or fiance or wife, I'm not sure, she's having a baby. So Garcelle is about to be a grandma and she don't, mm -mm. her body says she is not a grandma. She is beautiful. And so congratulations to her for being a grandma. So they move on to Erica's house and she is showing her contracts with her husband that she is Roxy on Broadway, which is a great accomplishment. Just like she said, she came from Shooters, the Go-Go Club, to Broadway as Roxy, which is an amazing accomplishment. And when Tom told her how proud of her she was, she cried again. I said, oh, Erica, which is totally understandable. Totally understandable. When you have the person that you love so much, who was always there to help you no matter what, mentally, physically, financially, emotionally, that's something to cry about. It really is. So I am really excited for Erica Jane. Things are just getting better and better for her. Lisa and Teddy go for a walk and Lisa was telling her about her daughter Amelia who's in college in New York. You know, she's 18. She has some anxiety issues. You know, and she also has, I believe, an eating disorder. And she was saying that it's really difficult for her to be away from her family and not have them with her while she's in New York. And their therapist thinks it's a good idea for her to come home. And I would agree. Um, nothing is more soothing when you are anxious or when you are lonely than to be able to be with your mom. You know, FaceTime is great, but being able to drive over or just come home is perfect. And Lisa was stating that, you know, sometimes when her daughters post their real truths and real feelings online, she feels that people are gonna judge and say that it's her fault because she wasn't a good enough mom. And I think that's a natural feeling. I think that all parents feel sometimes when something isn't right and their child isn't um, feeling the way that they think they should feel or is going through something, you ask yourself, is it me? Did I do something wrong? That's a natural feeling. But I don't think that Lisa has done anything wrong. I mean, people are people. You know what I mean? Everybody's, you know, everybody goes through something. Every No one is perfect. Millions upon millions of people have anxiety problems or anorexia or bulimia, you know, some sort of mental illness. It doesn't mean that your parent was a bad parent and caused you to have that. So I think that if Lisa is thinking that way, she's being way too hard on herself. And if any mom is feeling that way, she's being too hard on herself because nine times out of 10, it has nothing to do with you. But all you can do is be there for your child, get them the help that they need, and make sure that they not only hear you tell them that you love them, but they feel that you love them, that you're showing them that you love them with your actions. So Lisa should not be hard on herself at all. Kyle is still in New York and she has a little dinner with Sutton the Rich, okay? And they have nothing in common. That dinner that they had together, Kyle looked so uncomfortable and awkward sitting with Sutton the Rich. I mean, it was crazy. She told Kyle, your fashion show was really lovely. She said, I really didn't know what leisure wear was. Whew, this woman is a bitch. So, you know, cause she's used to couture. She says, I was thinking about developing a line and calling it yacht wear. Kyle says, that's nice, but I would hate to offend people who don't have a yacht. That's almost everyone. I mean, what? Then she tells Kyle that they should have a yacht rock, a rock yacht, something like that. And Kyle says, well, what's rock yacht? And she says, 
rock music on your yacht. What the hell? Really, bitch? I'm telling you, I have still not warmed up to Sutton, and I don't know if I will. I really don't. The woman is too much. You do not have to throw your wealth in people's face like this. It's just tacky. Move on to Denise and she was talking to her husband and letting him know that Charlie put some stuff out in the blogs about her and she is completely shocked about the whole thing because she was never taking Charlie to court for child support. He is actually taking her to court to have his child support lowered that he doesn't pay. And she was saying now she has to go to court, file all this documentation, and she's just not in the mood for it because she has a hernia. She ended up having surgery. The surgery lasted longer than it was supposed to. It was supposed to be about an hour, an hour and a half. But when they got in there, they realized that she had four hernias. Wow, that is a lot. And it was extremely painful and her doctor told her it was dangerous if they didn't remove it. So. Thankfully, she was able to remove it and her husband was there to support her and, you know, help her get back to, you know, being well again. They stayed at a very nice hotel for a few nights so that they didn't have to, you know, drive back to Malibu. And she said that, you know, she was extremely thankful for her husband for being so supportive and loving her and loving her daughters. And of course, she's also thankful for her the big dick. She brings that up a lot. I'm assuming that that has to be one amazing dick. I, you know. Now I'm just saying, Teddy sent the girls a text message inviting them to one of her retreats. So, I wanna say that one of my viewers said that I was a little hard on Teddy last week. So, I said, I will go into this with an open mind when talking about Teddy because I realize that not everybody has the same opinion as me, which is okay. I mean, everybody is allowed to have their own opinion. So I went into this with an open mind about Teddy. So as I was saying, Teddy sends a text message to all the girls inviting them to a retreat that she has coming up where it's going to be her and all of her coaches. You know, she owns she owns that life coach brand service app thing that she does and she's opened it to the public. So she sends the text and the show has all the girls read the text message and at the bottom of her text message, she says that they don't have to come if they don't want to, but they're welcome. I don't know about you, but if I receive a text message and somebody is inviting me to something and lets me know that I don't have to come if I don't want to, that just doesn't really seem that welcoming. And it doesn't seem like you really want me to be there at all. You know, I mean, that's just me. So while the girls are reading the text message, it seems like none of them really wanted to go either. Nobody is really ready for Teddy in her life coach mode you know they're not ready for it so lisa and teddy ride together to sutton's store opening that she's having and lisa earlier had said some negative things about teddy's retreat and how she was happy that she wasn't gonna go because she just you know wasn't there for it or whatever so she wanted to tell teddy ahead of time before she found out later so lisa has learned something remember all the seasons before when she would say something about people and then she couldn't recall well she's going ahead and telling people up front now mm -hmm. she's learned a lesson so i think she also wanted teddy to know that be patient with people don't expect too much and you know, it's possible that it could be some mess. Teddy pretty much says, well, they don't have to come. Like, I don't really need them there. They arrive at Sutton's event and Sutton, of course, is Sutton. 
rich. So she's there wearing some couture outfit that I thought was not that cute. And Erica tells her how beautiful she looks and asks her what she was wearing. And she says, somebody couture. And Erica says, you do not have to tell everybody that that is couture. Like, and, and it's ugly. That's what Erica said. I didn't say that. Well, she didn't say ugly. She said bad. I think it's a lot. I think it's a lot. And I think Sutton is a lot, to be honest. Um, I don't think that too many people in the group, besides maybe Lisa, is really feeling Sutton right now. Um, then Teddy makes the announcement that um, you don't have to come Here's to her. the thing, guys. Truthfully, I really don't care if y'all come or don't come. <laughs> really? Uh, wait a minute. I'm coming. And if you don't give a sh then why am I coming? I don't care. care. She cares. This is important to me. Yes. And I invited you guys because I like you and I just wanted to it's give you a situation where like everybody's support is going to like lift me up in the moment. Oh, Teddy, the hole is deep enough already. Well, Honestly, thanks. I can give you my word. You not coming will not upset me. That didn't go over too well. Not at all. Listen. The previews for next week, we see Teddy crying and storming off. And I have a feeling she's crying and storming off because people probably held her feet to the fire about something. Um, yeah. This episode was cool. I mean, it wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst either. And I'm still keeping an open mind about Teddy. I... I think that Teddy offers her life coach services to people who don't want it and people who have not paid. And I think she should leave that to people who are paying her for it. But that's just me. And so until next time, bye. Oh.